Hello, uh, welcome to episode five of Taking It Further, um, this series of short videos that covers some of the things that we're not able to cover on our um, normal Sunday mornings. Um, last Sunday, which was the 8th of November 2020, we were looking at uh, 2 Kings chapter 11, which is the story of Athaliah and the boy king Joash. Um, and next Sunday, the 15th of November, we are going to be looking at 2 Kings chapter 19. And between the end of 2 Kings 11 and the beginning of, well, but, uh, and 2 Kings 18, there is about um, 120 years of history. So I thought it might be useful just to very quickly um, skim over that story. If you've got a Bible, it would be really handy to have it open. And as you just flick between 2 Kings 11 and 2 Kings uh, 18, uh, you'll see that it's just kind of small paragraph after small paragraph of so-and-so king of Israel, so-and-so king of Judah. So there's quite a lot going on in terms of kings. Um, I've found that one of the the most helpful way to try and make sense of passages like this or work out what's going on is actually just to kind of literally sit down with the passage and a piece of paper and a pencil and just kind of write, uh, try and make some kind of uh, sense, a bit like that, some sense of uh, what's going on in terms of who's the king, how long they were king for, uh, were they a good king, tick, were they a bad king, cross, um, and try and work out whether different kings come uh, in terms of each other. Uh, also, if you've got a study Bible, I mean, I, I've got the um, NIV Life Application Bible, but the uh, study Bible will almost certainly have uh, some kind of, of chart um, inside with the kings of Judah, the kings of Israel, uh, and also quite helpfully the prophets um, who overlap with the different kings. Um, so we left our story at the well let's uh, have a look at this slide um so we had uh, a couple of weeks ago we saw that or uh, that jehu uh, became king of israel after killing both the king of israel and the king of judah both of whom were either the son or the grandson of the king ahab um athaliah uh, decided that rather than uh, anyone else become king she was going to become queen so she killed a whole bunch of princes but we saw last week that Joash was um, smuggled away for six years and so at the end of chapter uh, 11 you've got uh, Joash becoming the king of Judah and he is a direct descendant of David. Um, So it'll be helpful to just kind of skim through the chapters as we, we talk, but I would encourage you to afterwards to go away uh, and to, to read um, the whole thing. Um, chapter 12 is about Joash uh, repairing the temple um, and some of the things that, that he did. Um, and then in chapter, so we move into chapter 13 and uh, we see that uh, Jehoahaz uh, becomes king after his father Jehu um, dies and um, Jehoahaz spends a lot of time under pressure from Haziel who is the king of Aram but in chapter 13 and verse 4 we read that, that he did seek the Lord's favour even though he was a king that did evil in the eyes of the Lord he did seek the Lord's uh, favour and God sent um, a deliverer. Um, Joash had quite a long reign uh, and this isn't these slides aren't intended to be uh, to scale or anything like that. Jehoahaz reigned for 17 years and then he was uh, replaced by Jehoash. Um, in, again this is still in chapter 13 um, there's an interaction between Je uh, Jehoash and Elisha and we read just kind of one line in chapter chapter 13, verse 20. Elisha died and was buried. That's the end of um, Elisha's story. 
Uh, but while Jehoash was still king in Israel, um, Amaziah replaces uh, Joash as king in Judah. And although Amaziah was able, able to defeat Edom and a few other uh, kings, he, he spent a lot of his time uh, being challenged by, Jude, uh, by Israel, uh, by first of all uh, jo Jehoash, and also then by his son Jeroboam the second. And uh, Judah was routed by Israel um, at this time. So it wasn't a good time uh, for Judah. Uh, and as I say, Jehoash was uh, replaced um, after 16 years by Jeroboam II. Jeroboam II was going to reign for 41 years. And then if we move all over to the left, so we're going from left to right. Um, 27 years into Jeroboam II's reign, um, Azariah, who sometimes is called Uzziah, um, becomes king. Um, Azariah, as uh, Amaziah and Joash before him, it says, did good in the uh, eyes of the Lord. Uh, some of them, as you read through, it will say that they did uh, good in the evil of the, uh, in, good in the eyes of the Lord, uh, but they didn't, and they were they they went so far, but not the whole way. But I'll leave you to read through the different kings. Um, so where are we up to? Uh, Azariah. Okay, so when Azariah has been king for thirty eight years. We then come into a period of a number of short reigns in um, Israel and we're getting into a period now where kings, rather than being replaced by um, kings being replaced by their sons, uh, we do find as we progress in Israel's story, we find kings being assassinated uh, and replaced by someone who assassinated them. So Jeroboam is succeeded by a king called Zechariah, who was only king for half a year and Zechariah is the the final king in the line of Jehu remember that God said to Jehu you would have somebody on the throne to the fourth generation Zechariah is that fourth generation um, and he is replaced by a guy called Shalom who owes only king for one month and then Manahem who is king for 10 years and at this time Assyria so let me just put up, where is it gone? Let me put up a this slide. Um, so Assyria was the major superpower of the day. Uh, their capital city was Nineveh, which is in modern day Iraq. And the, um, the Assyrian Empire, uh, obviously they, they kind of stretches and shrinks as battles happen, uh, but it stretches right from the, the Persian Gulf, which is not on this map, it's over to the east of this map, stretches from the Persian Gulf around the Fertile Crescent and down through um, Israel and Judah uh, eventually and then even at times kind of stretching into, uh, into Egypt. But as I say, the, at various points the, the empire grew and, and shrank, but that's roughly the area. So that's the Assyrian Empire. And uh, at, so we were up to King Manahem and he came under pressure from Assyria he was um, invaded so this is the king of Israel uh, invaded or threatened by Assyria and he paid them off uh, as you will read as you read through you'll find a number of the the kings kind of raiding the temple treasury and the and their palace treasuries to pay off the invaders and so Assyria with withdrew You then um, have uh, two similarly sounding kings following on from, so uh, Pekiah and Pika. And again, when we get to, to Pika, so Pekiah only ruled for two years. Pika was on the throne for uh, 20 years, so that we're now up to kind of 50 years into Azar Azariah's reign. Um, 
and again the Assyrians were threatening the borders uh, a king called Tiglath Pileser uh, and he was an Assyrian and he took parts of uh, the northern part of Israel and the the people were deported back to Assyria and foreigners were were imported um, and so we are up to um, 2 Kings chapter 15 at this point again moving all over to the left so uh, two years into Pekah's 20 year reign Jotham uh, becomes king um, in in Judah he was to reign for 20 years he was to do uh, good in the eyes of the Lord and uh, Pekah and was to join forces with the king of Aram and to kind of give quite a lot of hassle and aggro towards Judah. Uh, Jotham was succeeded by uh, King Ahaz and Ahaz did evil in the eyes of the Lord and in chapter 16 verses 1 to 4 we read a bit more detail about that but it says he even sacrificed his son in the fire engaging in the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. So Ahaz uh, was a uh, particularly evil uh, king and although he's getting a lot of aggro from Pekah and the king of Aram and so he turns to the king of Assyria and offers to uh, offers him money and, and treasures from the, the temple and asks for his help and so tiglath pileser comes against um, the king of Israel and against uh, parts of, of that kingdom and takes again takes takes part of Israel so Ahaz so was a particularly um, bad king I mean one of the things that he did do was to after he'd got help from tiglath pileser uh, he he went to Damascus and saw the altar that the king of Assyria had and he got someone to copy it and so that when he came back to um to Jerusalem he there was a model there was kind of the, the rather than the temple the, the altar that was supposed to be in the temple he had it replaced by an altar that uh, mirrored what the Assyrians were using and used that instead so he did lots of evil um in the eyes of the Lord um, 12 years into Ahaz's reign, Hoshea becomes king of Israel. And uh, Hoshea is, only reigns for nine years before disaster happens. And we're going to be looking at this part of the story on the 13th of December. Um, and so this is chapter 17 of Two Kings where Israel, the northern kingdom, is exiled. This happened in 722 um, BC. They're taken into exile. And 2 Kings 17 verse 7 is very clear. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of Egypt from under the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods and followed the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before them etc 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 and so because of their continual uh, sin against God they were taken into exile um, three years into Hoshea's reign Hezekiah becomes king of Judah and um, so we're now into chapter 18 and whereas a number of the previous kings had uh, been good in the eyes of the Lord but they hadn't done x y or z um, Hezekiah uh, is is looked on very favorably um, he he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord just as his father David um, had done uh, and then it lists kind of a number of the, the extra things that he did that the previous kings hadn't done and so Hezekiah has been king for six years uh, before Israel in the north is uh, taken 
um, into exile by again by Assyria. Uh, Shao Manasseh was the king at the time. Uh, and so that's where we're going to leave it today. Um, we're going to pick up. Um, we're looking at 2 Kings chapter 19 on Sunday the 15th of November. I'll put the link to the, the previous uh, Sunday and the coming Sunday uh, in the notes underneath this video. Uh, but we're going to pick up the, the story very briefly into 2 Kings chapter 18 and then look um, in a bit more detail at 2 Kings chapter 19. So we pick up the story 120 years uh, after where we dropped it off uh, last time. Hezekiah is now king in Judah. Uh, he is a good king and Israel has been taken into exile by the Assyrians. Okay, so I will see you on Sunday the 15th.